Hello everyone and welcome back to the Carpenters YouTube channel. If you are a bit slow and you haven't already realised, we're on the banks of Bluebell at the moment. And I was thinking to myself, what can I do to, how can I use my channel in a way to help uh, anglers um, that are coming to Bluebell that don't really know what they're doing and you know want, want to get on well on this complex. So I thought to myself, well what can I do? So I thought, I'll make a video, my best tips um, for when you're coming down to the complex and um, well, here they are. Okay, so my first tip and this is um, one so many people get wrong is you've, you have to come with an open mind, especially in summer um, and by that I mean you don't particularly know what lake you're going to get on, you don't know what swims you're going to get, it's more of a you fit in where you can kind of thing on here. Um, I managed to get the swim I wanted, but that was very, very, very lucky. This swim is never, never, ever free, and there was there's three swims on this whole lake that are free. So I've came prepared with uh, with every lake in mind, um, you know, whether that be Bluebell all the way up to Kingy. So I've bought chod rigs, spinner rigs, zig rigs, um, hair rigs, side bag rigs. You know, you name it. I've, I've I've came with it just in case I can't get on the uh, on the lake I want. So. Um, that's that's my first big tip. You have to come in an open mind. You can't you can't prepare for uh, for one lake or or one particular swim. You know you have to come with an open mind to this place because you will be disappointed nine times out of ten. I got very lucky this time, but the last six times I've come here, I've tried to go onto this swim and I haven't I haven't I haven't been successful. And four of the last six times I haven't even been able to go on the lake. So I'm I'm in a very lucky situation at the moment. I got where I wanted to go. And um, well, I haven't caught anything yet, but so I've still got plenty of time. So that's that's my first major tip. You know, you, you can't expect uh, a particular swim or a uh, on a particular lake unless your mates are in a swim that you're going into, uh, or your mates uh, saving a swim for you. That's a different story. Um, my second tip and my biggest tip is you have to do your research. You know, um, this is a hard venue. Um, you can't expect to catch every time. Uh, you know, you're a magician if you catch every time you come here. Um, I've just come off the back of a blank uh, on Bluebell. I didn't film that video, but um, yeah, I've just come off the back, the back of a blank. Um, and you know, you can't beat yourself up about it either because fishing is not catching. You know, that's why it's called fishing and not catching. Blanking is what I take to be me learning about a lake or a swim. Um, so, you know, if I've blanked, I think to myself, right, have I tried my hardest? I always try my hardest, so yes. What have I learned? You know, I've learned these particular things that I'll take into account for the next time I'm down here. And then I can implement that into my fishing. So I never think of a blank. Um, I, you know, I never go home upset about not, not catching any fish or, or anything like that. I'm never, never angry about not catching a fish. I try to think of the positives from that session and I go, right, yes, I've done this right, I've done this right, and I've done this right. I haven't done this quite right and I haven't done this quite right, but what can I do to improve that next session? Maybe that might maybe those two things I got wrong were the difference between me catching a fish or not. So I implement those into the next session and hopefully um, I'll bag a few fish on the next session. So that's that's my second tip. You know, you have to do your research. Um, come prepared, don't under prepare, you know, the, the old fashioned saying if you fail to prepare, you fail you're preparing to fail. Prepare, prepare, do your research, watch a lot of YouTube videos. I presume if you're watching my YouTube channel, you do know a little bit about Bluebell Lakes, but make sure you know you read these uh, 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 carp uh, magazine reports on Bluebell Lakes. Get a feel for what the lake fish is like, its behaviour, bite times, etc. etc. If you can't find that information, well, then you're going to have to come here and find out yourself by possibly blanking. But that is that is the whole. Uh, the whole game of carp fishing, you know, if if I came to Bluebell and caught every single time, you know, it, it'd, get, it'd get boring eventually. Um, but no, you have to do a lot of research for big for places like this because these are not easy lakes. These are absolutely not easy lakes, you know. Um, the best angler in the world could come here uh, with all the best baits, the best rigs and all that and all that and all that. But if he's not on the fish and the fish aren't willing to eat his uh, bait he's never going to catch a fish so don't beat yourself up if you've done your research you've done all of this and all that and all this and whatever and you don't catch go home regroup your thoughts have a think what i've done right and what i've done wrong try and like try and um 
gather all that information for the next time you go fishing at Bluebell or wherever that is you may go and hopefully that will improve your session uh, the next time you're there. Okay, so my third tip, and you, you, you hear this quite a lot on, on a lot of these uh, carp fishing um, videos and these films and that, but um, the baylists are always, 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 always your best source of information. They, they, they live here, you know, they work here, they spend all day, every day here, every day of the year, apart from Christmas. But, you know, what I'm saying is they know these lakes like the back of their hand, they know the behaviour. They know what the, they know what weather they respond to best. They know if they follow the wind. They know what baits they like. They know what rigs they know and what hooks and and all of this. Literally, annoy the hell out of the bailiffs to get as much information up there as you can because their job as bailiffs is to not only look after the look after the the fishery, but it's to help the anglers catch more fish, which will which will make the fishery more successful and more appealing to the angler. Um, and, and then that will lead to more money for the fishery and more successful fishery and it goes on like that so pick the bailiff's brains for knowledge every chance you get I'm constantly doing it and I fish here an awful lot but there's always something that you don't know that the bailiff does know so don't don't come here thinking you know absolutely everything thinking oh I'm absolutely going to smash the place up because you probably won't there's an odd person that does smash the place up but you're probably not that guy so pick the bailiff's brains for knowledge make sure you've <laughs> your brain is like a sponge listen to everything they're saying take every tip on board and if it doesn't work it doesn't work you know um it's the right time the right place car fishing is potluck at the end of the day but listen to what the bailiffs have got to say don't don't think you're better than them because you're probably not i know i'm certainly not and you you will definitely have better luck on these uh, on these fisheries if you do uh pick the brains of the bailiffs Okay, so the next one, I'm losing count of the numbers. This is a very simple rule. Don't break the rules, okay? Don't come here with barbed hooks or uh, under uh, or a line lighter than it needs to be or death rigs or anything like that because Trev the Bailiff, he does not tolerate anything. People do, I, I was rig checked yesterday. Luckily I follow the rules, otherwise I've been kicked off. But just, it's not worth it because Yes, I absolutely agree. Barb hooks are 100% better than uh, than barber hooks. But what you've got to remember is, is it worth that may that possibly landing the fish or possibly not landing the fish with barbed and barbless to get kicked off and not get your money back? And not only that, you'll never be allowed back on here again. So I understand why people use barb with. I understand why people use barb hooks. Um, you know, better better. Um, hook to land ratio and, and, and whatnot but the simple answer is you've just got to follow it but at the end of the day rules are rules and you know we we all have to follow them um if we want to enjoy our time here because i don't know about you but if i wasn't if i was using barbed hooks i'd be absolutely living on eggshells every day dreading for a bailiff to come round and uh, and rig check me so in my opinion it's not worth it do do what you want maybe you'll get lucky maybe you won't uh, that's just the risk you'll have to take but it's not my recommendation that you break the rules my next tip and um, this is a tip that not only applies to Bluebell Lakes uh, this is pretty much every lake in the world uh, that you're going carp fishing for don't just rock up to the shop uh, buy your ticket and just choose the first swim that you see because you'll be wasting your time unless you're incredibly lucky and there is fish in your swim already because I see people all the time, they rock up to the shop, they get the sticker, put it in the first swim they see that, that where they can park their car and they just unload their stuff there, set up and they blank. When they, when they know there's fish showing on the other side of the lake, but you can't obviously drive. So, watercraft is an essential part of any carp fishing obviously, and you've just got to keep an eye on the water, um, watch what the fish are doing because you can't catch what's, in front, what's not in front of you. Um, and make sure a move is always on is always an option for you because that is the difference between not catching and catching it's happened to me so many times on this place um, and you know if I hadn't have moved those times I wouldn't have caught uh, the fish that I've caught so um, a move is likely today actually um, if there keeps if there's fish constantly showing over there I'm gonna have to move over there but there is there was bubbling this morning and they'll uh, a couple of shows this morning out in front of me so I'm gonna stick with my guns for now but I'm not gonna ignore a move and um, 
partly the reason I came into swimming is because I wanted to wanted to come in the swim. The swim's got good form, but there was also a couple of showing out in front of me as I got it. So I didn't just come into the swim because oh yes, my swim's free that I wanted. Yes, I'm gonna hop into that right away. No, if there was a, if there was fish showing over there, I would have went over there. But this, the, the, I got very lucky, like I said. This one was free and there was fish showing out in front of me, so that's why I plonked myself down in here. So, <clears throat> I had to take a little break quickly for a couple of minutes or half an hour. My throat just went really bad, so I had to sort of take a couple of minutes break, hence it's lighter outside. So, um, yeah, so I mean, that's pretty much the main uh, points you want to take into consideration when you're traveling to Bluebell. And there's a lot of, lot of things people tell you. Um, you know, I'll use this bait, use this rig. If the bailiffs haven't told you it, just take it as complete and utter, you know, you know what, um, at the end of the day, use what you're confident in. And if you're confident in it, you're more likely to catch, uh, in my opinion. So I'm gonna uh, leave the video there, I think. Hopefully you enjoyed this little segment uh, about the video. Um, I feel like, <clears throat> Sorry, uh, I feel like, you know, the more I can help you people that are coming to Bluebell, um, the better I'll feel about meeting you guys down there, you know, hoping that uh, I've helped you catch your PB or the biggest fish in the pond or, or something like that. So, uh, you know, if there's any questions you want to ask me about Bluebell, uh, feel free to DM me on Instagram um, or Facebook. Um, I'll put them up here now, if I can remember how. Um, but yeah, no, thank you for watching the video, everyone. Uh, make sure you like, comment and subscribe and whatever you want to do and all that lovely jazz. Uh, and I'll see you in the next video. The next video you will see is uh, the video that I'm recording at the minute, actually, the session video. Um, the Hunt for a 50. So, rods are all out, like I just said. Um, and yeah, it's a very, very nice day. But the th worrying thing about this is, um, you know, another couple of days like this and um, they might have a go at spawning. So, I'm going to keep my eye out on the water. I don't want to fish for fish that are spawning. And uh, hopefully, fingers crossed, Tilly will come our way before too long. So, um, <clears throat> I'll see everyone in the next video. Thank you so, ever so much for watching and um, I'll, uh, I'll see you in a bit.